five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Yay! For the vets, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Hello and welcome to the DMs Book Club, a podcast where we read about some Dungeons and Dragons and discuss how we might put it in our role-playing campaigns. With me, as ever, is Hamilton of Dragon's Jewel. Hello, Hamilton. Hello, Fiona. How are you? <laughs> I am really well, thank you. Just having a long chat about Thunderbirds before this mm-hmm. conversation, <laughs> as one does. <laughs> it's very important. Very important. Not as how important it, to D&D, obviously. But, yeah. Obviously not, no. How have you? How, how's, how are you on the D&D front? You, you were talking before about your Curse of Strahd campaign and all yes. that sort of thing. Yes, Enjoying yes. it? I am, as much as you can, with creepy children and dolls and mists that chase me. But yes. yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I'm freaking out. I've been, As I said, I've been pinging off the detect good and evil, so I've run out of those now. Uh, my hit dice, <laughs> I've used all my hit dice up already. I've only got seven hit points and we're about to enter a creepy house. I feel great. There's blood coming out of trees. What more could you want? <laughs> Cla- classic, classic Ravenloft. <laughs> oh, Ravenloft in the winter. Oh. Oh, well, well, where we're going, we don't need Ravenloft. <laughs> yes, we don't. We, we don't, don't indeed. How is your D&D going? <laughs> uh, my D&D is going very well, thank you. We've had a couple of weeks off. Um, okay. Last night we finished... Um, still coming out on the podcast version, but we've been doing the House of Lament or mm. Lamont, as I pronou- been pronouncing it completely incorrectly, um, from uh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, um, which essentially is a spooky house uh, with seances, sort of one shot, and we've been running it using um, a mechanic called Survivors, which is a bit like if you've read uh, Tasha's Cold and Irving, there's they, they introduced this thing officially called Sidekicks, where um, they weren't fully fleshed out characters yeah. they were just sort of a to make it a bit balanced so that you know you when you create your minor characters they don't necessarily take the win and such mm. so we've been using something called survivors which is a very similar mechanic i they're not as powerful as fully fledged player characters but they are horror themed so they are the the like uh you would imagine them being like the person that survives after a horrific attack and all that right. sort of thing so and they, um, and they what sort of age your party or no just... no no so i made the party play survivors <laughs> oh right sorry oh shit okay sorry <laughs> yeah um yeah it is it is um <laughs> the, the one shot is I for made play. Them have a really bad time <laughs> oh yes it, we finished it off finally though and they, they had it again I, again it's just more testing out the story element of it and they've got yeah. some things so when you level them up they do have like uh, certain abilities so, so like there's one that was like wailing scream so if you you know if you use that as your reaction you can re-roll the dice and see if you get the higher number <laughs> as a, a scream getting away from stuff and all that sort of thing um cool i've not actually yeah. read i've not read um van richten's all the way through as as you as you know i'm not the biggest horror fan even though i'm yes. as a strand. <laughs> true also, true yeah, but but, um, but also, I'm glad I haven't, since I don't want to spoil anything for Curse of Strahd. I don't know if it does, but I haven't I haven't delved into it as much as the other books. So that's mm. quite interesting. I must yeah. I'll have a look at them. I'll have a look at yes, them. yeah, I think uh, yeah, it's at the end of uh, Van Richten. And there isn't mm. too much in terms of spoilers, because it does talk, uh, again, I know it's not what the episode's about today, but the, the mm. Van Richten does talk about these domains of despair, which mm. Barovia is one of them, which is where mm. Curse of Strahd is. But... But, but, Hamilton, we're not going to talk about domains no. of despair. No, no, no. We are going to talk about a domain of delight, or sort of. Yes. Um, I, shall I tell you what we've been... Well, you know what we've been reading this week, but shall I tell our viewers what we've been uh, Why reading not? this week? Why not? Let's do it, because they, they have no idea yet, do they? <laughs> no, no. They're just, they've just sat here listening to us babbling on. So um, I'll say, yeah, sort of for transparency at the top of this episode, uh, I was sent from, uh, um, I guess... Friend of the show now. I guess that's how this works when people send me things. Uh, somebody called Jimmy Flowers, who goes under the name, I think it's at Splinterverse on Twitter. And they have written a companion or a, a compendium, sorry, of uh, fairy wild stuff to be that sort of came out in conjunction with the Wild Beyond the Witch Light release. So today we're going to be looking at Feywild Companion, uh, which you can get on DMs Guild for 14 dollars 99 cents uh but obviously full disclosure uh i was kindly gifted this and i therefore gifted it to hamilton to read as well um so i'm not saying that we're sponsored by them or anything like that but we did get this uh very kindly as a gift but obviously we'll i'm sure we can share the link out when this episode goes out yeah. of you know where you can get this I'll try and put it in the bottom here somewhere now 
now Ooh. great <laughs> seamless <laughs> that works out really well um but yes so i thought it's it's, it's an interesting one because i am not someone who actually uses a lot of homebrew stuff and i i've only recently discovered dm's guild which i know is like what it's been around for years so it's nice to see like something like this which is obviously very current as we know we talked mm. about wild beyond the witch i and sort of the that fey wild stuff uh sort of last week our first impressions so this is like uh, a group of writers own interpretation of the fade wild and what they'd include in it and stuff with very little knowledge of what was going to go into the book i think just to say at the top of this um they in their introduction obviously they talk about what's in it but they said yeah we started coming together in may of this year when we first heard wild beyond the Witchlight mm -hmm. was being released and so that's may it's obviously now uh september where it's come out so that was like a good four maybe five nice, months yeah. of solid work and my god <laughs> Like, yeah, they, it shows though they have definitely done a solid piece of work and and obviously it's all well put together i mean we can't show any of the pictures of it but it's it's one of those it's done in the classic D, D format and it's which is nice you know i like that if you're doing something that it definitely is focusing as a graphic mm -hmm. designer i'm always the person that wants to add my own little spice to it but i think they've done a really good job at making it fit with your the rest of your book collection um and it's yeah and it's very well it's well put together and well written as well. There's some really mm. good bits of writing in there, actually. And I wonder, did you? I don't know if you saw, but on the sort of introduction page where it gives mm. the credits, uh, there is a list of illustrations and the illustrator <gasps> names yes. and what page they're on. They as did I, do that. Yeah. I saw. I saw that, and I thought of you after our conversation last week. So, and I thought that actually was a, actually a really smart idea. So, if you didn't want to put the name of the artist underneath because there wasn't any space, you could at least put them. As a sort of um, a, a content that is actually list. A DM's Guild requirement. Oh, is it? Yes, and someone oh, did who not put that. stuff out on DM's Guild. You can, I think you can. It's been a while. It's been over a year since I last put something out on there. I'm trying to rewrite something at the moment, but <laughs> you have to at least acknowledge them either on the page or in a credits note. So, which is very good, and I think that's mm. um, and and it's something that I mentioned last week. As I said, I w wish D and D do that as well. <laughs> Wizards no. would do that as well, but, but yeah. How interesting. Well, and then, yes, so again, like, obviously it says, you know, stuff like front cover and actually what it is. So, like, mm. these figures on this page by so-and-so. And then, obviously, obviously because it's a PDF, it links to, the, to them as well. So that's, I just mm. thought, again, it's, it seems such a small thing. But when we are, you know, creatives in a creative space, it's so nice mm. to actually see that uh, thing. So, hey, wizards, consider. consider. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um yeah, no, it's, it, I really like that. I do, and the links thing is actually really good because you're like, oh, I really like that piece of artwork. Just click on it. And you can just follow them. Just follow it. But yes, this sort of companion, it, uh, companion, sorry, it has stuff like new subclasses, backgrounds, monsters, adventures, encounters, spells, feats, optional rules. It There's a lot <laughs> packed into the 150 pages, uh, as we know from finding out today, yeah. yes. <laughs> reading it through. <laughs> I have read it for more than one day, but it, when, when, I, when you first said to me and I was like, oh, right, okay, so this is, we're going to talk about this for an hour, are we? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah. So uh, we will say, obviously, this is a very, very brief overview um, mm. of stuff. And if anything, any of this you find really, really interesting stuff, please, please, please go and have a look and go support uh, people like like Splinterverse yeah. on DM's Guild. I'm sure, again, I say this mm. without actually checking, but I'm sure there is a full page preview or a quick preview of these sort of things. So if there's mm. anything there, you can at least look at the first couple of pages and check them out. And but, also, yeah. if you have you do read it and you have anything to talk about, I am eager to talk more about it. And I'm sure Fiona would be. So just yes. hit us up on Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. Our Twitter's are below, but uh, you're at the DMs Book Club, and I am, I am. at DM underscore dozen or at Dragon Stewart, whichever one. I'd mm -hmm. be more than happy to talk more about it because um, there is a lot in here, and I'd yeah, always it's... like to hear people's thoughts because that's always yeah. And and considering that the Fey World is such a big thing just now, uh, mm. big thing. Yeah, it's it's obviously the most thing releases. There's a lot of stuff in here, and I've gone ooh, and so I'm definitely going to go back and read through it with a more keen eye to put stuff yeah. in. So so I guess, Hamilton, where would we like to start? What's what's the thing that's standing out to you, would yeah. you say? Well, I think going in order, but I think it works going to some of the, the character origins are quite interesting. I think mm -hmm. there's some, there's, there's something that I've picked out about them particularly, <laughs> which I want to make a note of, but they have, yes. um, a, it's uh, three character backgrounds. I think that's mm -hmm. correct, yes which is the Feybound, the Greenseer, and the Kaloran. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, mm -hmm. So the, uh, off the top of my, you know, off the simple version, Feybound is 
uh, someone who's been lost or gone disappeared uh, in the Fae lo- in the Fae Wild, a bit mm-hmm. like the Fae Lost actually that you have in Wild Wild Witch Light. Very similar, isn't it? Very yes. similar. And then there's the Green Seers, which are basically beings that have been have become one with nature through some sort of literally, <laughs> literally, yeah. And then and then the Kiloran, which are basically humanoids uh, that have have basically got uh, like a um, elemental have got a uh, an affinity to a particular type of um, mm-hmm. of uh, na- natural environment, so like jungles or swamps or forests, which is something I actually thought of once of doing <laughs> before, Ooh. thinking that'd be quite a fun... Oh, well, I never got around to it, so I'm glad someone better oh. than me did it, so that's, that's true. It's like, it's, what's the word? Uh, when you're in an improv scene, you hold a thousand tiny funerals for all your ideas you bring <laughs> and they die, and that's the thing I always think is like, I had this idea, oh, <laughs> yeah. it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I see it as uh, I have a shore of um, a shore of messages in bottles that never get past the breaker waves. That's how I see oh, it. Oh, oh, that's as an incredible image, but also incredibly sad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so you can have that whilst you <laughs> whilst you're having your soup and you want to cry into it. So anyway, um, <laughs> with that, I think the thing I wanted to notice note about these Feybound and the Green Seers, particularly, yes. is they have these origins. And yes negative <laughs> <They're> very dark <laughs> so there's like so the fey bound so people get lost in the fey world the idea is you're, you're a being that's been lost in the fey world and therefore get mm-hmm. touched by this and so it gives you some origin things so there's a classic one which is sort of alice in wonderland you see a magical creature and you follow it into the woods but there's the ones where um you you and your number friends two and number four <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah number four is you and your friends bathe in the waters of a moonlit pod uh, when you emerged, everything around in the water looked different. Eventually, you discovered that you had crossed over into the Feywild. None of your friends survived. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. They're all dead. That's it. You're, you're, yeah, it's bad. And then, you're, number two, you were having a picnic with your significant other in the wilderness. You both ended up in the Feywild. Your loved one died whilst you were there. It's like, okay. <laughs> why can't, Why do you have Why does everyone have to die? It's meant yeah. to... It felt a little bit... I think my only thing was that it just felt very dread like and it's sort of mm. like the Feywild is I know it's a dangerous place but in mm. my mind the Feywild is very much Disneyland which comes up you know you've got Alice in Wonderland we're going to have a bit of we're going to have a bit of Beauty and the Beast we're going to have a bit of Snow White later on that's kind mm. of what the Feywild is it's those sort of magical mystical mm. story tales and I think mm-hmm. I don't know it just felt you know and then going to the Green Seer like all, you wake up and all your organs have been turned into <laughs> into into living roots, plants living plants and it's like some sort of like yeah that's, yeah. that's a great yeah yeah you're, you've woke been up replaced in a bathtub by... you know sort of, sort <laughs> yeah, of yeah you, you're missing you're missing your kidney exactly yeah <laughs> having no. having uh having like an orchid growing out of it yeah it says altering your physiology in unexpected ways yeah um yeah i think i i totally see what you're talking about here i think maybe what they're trying to emulate is that whole sort yeah. of grim fairy tale thing so yeah. if you think like ugly duckling the snow queen that sort of thing and it's like 100%. beautiful but also dangerous i do agree though i think I, 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 one thing that came to me after you spoke to me about this and I was like ooh so I went back and had a look at it it feels very much like if you've ever watched like Doctor Who and they've taken like a historical companion for many episodes they are like somebody out of time mm. and they realise that like um, I'm sure like Amy Pond says at some point she goes I'm calling oh it's Rose Tyler I think but she, I'm calling my mum but she's dead she's mm. dead now where I am and I think that as a storytelling role play thing is yeah. interesting but then they do get to go back to where their loved ones are and I think that's what I've always think that's very important when you're creating characters that you do have a connection somewhere and so I think it's I do think it's mm. interesting because obviously the big thing about Feywild which we have spoken about before and on other episodes and I think last week that idea that time moves differently there yes. so it makes sense that when you go back none, none of the life that you knew is still there like the gnome that comes back after a short trip to the fair world, uh, somebody else is living in their house. The the town they grew up in has, has yeah. grown so much. So I think there's that element of it, but I did, none of them survived. <laughs> it's quite it's fine. Just, it was, it was, I'm not, I wasn't saying, it's not bad. It was just, it was just kind of jumped out at me at this sort of like, oh, right, okay. I was expecting something. I think it's because I was expecting something much more, mm. you know, much more light, I guess. Yeah, what I was no. And then it just kind of stuck with me like, okay, this is, this is good. Which actually, the book doesn't does have a lot of light touches to it. It just was funny how these. I, th- I think I think it's interesting as well because if you if we go on to the traits a little bit as well. So yeah. there's, there's something called uh, Feywild Trigger. So mm. you will often 
you were lost in the fairy world for so long that something about you isn't quite right. <laughs> Every at times when you are triggered and taken mm. back to the fairy world in your and you are taken back to the fairy world in your mind when you just when you're when this mm. happens, onlookers will describe you as having a blank stare. And then you roll. So when you gain this lineage, roll a d20. The number you roll becomes your trigger. Uh, whenever you roll 20 and your trigger happens, then you are catatonic for a second and then a wild effect. Occurs. So they have a whole list at the back of this book yeah, of different do. wild effects, like sort of a wild surges. And I, for me, I feel like what they're trying to do is obviously give you some sort of story element, a story mm. like hook per se. I'm not, again, I, I guess depending on how you run your table and stuff, I'm not a big fan of having that sort of trauma, especially making it as a role playing yeah. mechanic per mm. se. Like, I think that should be a, a discussion between players and stuff. I think 100%. it's an interesting idea. I think that, that's the thing. I don't want to, again, I'm yeah. sh- there's other things about this which I really, really enjoy, but I think there's something about it I was a bit like, I'm not sure I would I would talk to that player about it because, yeah. like, if it's a role that comes up quite regularly, I think they, they do stop it after a, a, a while, from what yeah. I remember. But uh, yeah, once this has been triggered twice, you can't use it again until you complete a short rest. So you can only mm. wild surge twice. Just the one last thing I want to talk about on the Fade Bound before maybe yep. going over to the Green Seer. Um, mm. They have an ability called Time Slip. I don't know if you saw this. Uh, yes. So oca- occasionally you feel time on the material plane slow to allowing you to change your mind before anyone notices. So if, if an action you take fails due to a roll you made, you may attempt to choose to attempt an entirely different action. Mm. Uh as far as anyone knows, the original action never happened. So very quick silver. Uh, yeah. Once you've used a switch, you can't do it until a long rest. I think that's really interesting. So you could find out in combat um, somebody's weakness, uh, mm. or, or like, oh, there, there, you go. I cast fire, uh, uh, fire bolt at someone. He goes, oh, it's imp- it, it, it's uh, immune to fire. Yeah. Oh, I, I take that back. Well, actually, it's uh, if it's it fails a check, doesn't it? Never mind. Yeah. But I guess you could work, you could work around that. So I just yeah. find that it's an interesting. I, one, I wrote, I like, this. I wrote yeah. like this. I wrote like this, and I really did. And it's, I think it's a, I think it's a really cool feature, and I think it's something mm. that, I think it gives a bit of advantage. But so does lucky. There's luck, you know, the lucky feet. And I think it's not. You don't get it until. Do you get it straight away? I can't mm, remember. I think you go, I, with with um, lineages, you get it straight away. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's, it's it's quite an interesting early on one, but it's a once per long rest, and it, you, you never get more than that. Human variant gets lucky. As a straightaway feat, doesn't it? Uh, you can, you can yeah. choose to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, in our custom, I was, I was pick it. So yeah, if someone's doing it. As well. <laughs> so to be fair, that's that kind of balances out. And I think it's, but I like just the the fact that you can't then do the same action. I thought it was a really yeah. nice little 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 twist on it because yeah, you have to take some a completely different course mm. of action. Yeah. I, I if, as flavor wise, it seems really mm. really interesting. Hundred like percent. No, it's really cool. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, so green seers then. Mm. Um, for this, I really liked because obviously you've, you've talked about the origin ones, which is I like the one for me that stood out to me was um, a fae found you dying in a forest. In saving you, they also transformed you, which to me s- screams uh, Tim Burton's uh, Batman with Catwoman being yes. rescued by cats. <laughs> but yes. I'm just imagining you dying and little like mushrooms come. <laughs> And then you become a, a. Well, then you'd have to be a sports druid, then, wouldn't you? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, so, and, and this is what I quite like. The, the, again, with this whole companion, and I, mm. I know with every homebrew stuff, tables upon tables of inspiration. But what I yeah. love is that, in my head, I guess I see. You know, you think, oh, it's always going to be like plants and leaves, or like a poison mm. ivy s things. But then mm. they have stuff like um, it could be fungus, uh, fungi, sorry, or moss. And mm. I love that as an idea. Like I know some people find are a bit creeped out by fun- yeah. fungi. But it's like a spores druid or something like that, like having a toadstool on your back mm. or something like that. I think just the image of it is just really interesting. And stuff like having like mistletoe or you as well, making a seasonal character. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Be quite cool. The um, berries one, the berries, vegetables, and or similar reminds me of those portraits of faces. Yes. You know, the ones where they've got I the. I, um, I can't remember the what vegetables. the artist is called. Yeah, the, the, and you make yeah. it out. Yeah. That's it's, that, those are really cool. They're great. But, yeah, yeah, ex- exactly that. It's just that really interesting thing. And then mm. the other origin one, which made me laugh, was um, your prayers to the gods for a plentiful crop were heard and granted. The prop, the, the crop just happened to be you. <laughs> it's like, oh no! <laughs> I know it's such a great tagline for a movie as well, isn't it? It's like I can imagine that one, like Triffid's pen or something like that. I think it's, but the, yeah, they're quite fun. The, I, the the blossoms I thought was their real main yes. thing. Do you want to, so they, yeah, do you want you want to describe what that is? Because I was quite curious about this one. Yeah, and how people they, would find this exactly. So they have this ability to grow blossoms on 
on themselves it, from what I gather from it. It says, your green says body grows blossoms capable of causing various effects. So they have an aromatic one which uh, blows soothing scents of blossom towards the creature, which I like because this again feels more like that Feywild, you know, the sort of sensual thing we were talking about in the witch light last week, uh, which um, attempts to lull you into sleep. So I'm just imagining lavender. You know, lavender and lavender. chamomile. Yeah. yeah. Sort yeah. of smells. Here I am drinking a peppermint tea because I'm, <laughs> I'm doing DM's book club. It's a book club. You, it's you, a book uh, club. We have to have, yeah. You have to have calm teas, not beers or something. Isn't it? And yeah, um, that, That's the late book club. <laughs> that's the first book club after dark. And then, uh, yeah, and then you could basically they could, they could fall unconscious um, with that. There's a nourishing one which gives people things to eat, which I think is great. Um mm-hmm. Similar to other beings uh, as well do that. I can't remember which one it was off the top of my head. The vined one, um, which is more of a sort of grappling uh, thing, and then a warped blossom, which mm. I thought was fun, uh, which is you crush the blossom in your fist and whisper mm. an inan- to an inanimate object consisting of mostly wood or other plant material within 30 feet. You can make a single alteration consisting of no more than five feet cube worth of the object's plant material. For example, you could warp a chair, making it break when someone sits down. Uh, or you could repair a large hole in an oak door or transform a wooden shield, making it unusable. And I think it's just mm. the, 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 I just like the little bit of um, of uh, uh, of uh, fairy dust, let's use that as a term, they've sprinkled mm. over that, that gives the, just a little bit more narrative for, uh, play in that, in that of the sort of, you know, you crush the blossom, whisper into the, you know, it's, it's kind of, I know, I just mm. love that sort of um, imagery. Uh, and I think, yeah, it's using that, it's that, again, that leaves, compared to the other three, which are all like something you, so like the vined one, like you said, that's a, that's all something you'd use in combat to restrain mm-hmm. uh, someone going away. The nourishing one, oh, that's to heal. Uh, the aromatic one's go to sleep. Again, I, I was thinking proper like a gloom, vile plume uh, person doing this. Mm-hmm. And then the warped one, I do like that idea because you leave that to the interpretation of the player, of mm-hmm. like, what do you do? Like the, the making a wooden shield unusable or repairing stuff or doing that sort of thing it's very versatile and it, i think mm. it, it's it'll be very interesting to see what people come up with that because i think i i was trying to think to myself like how would i use that one and my, the, there's always the worry when you see three really like ones you're like oh this has a purpose and then one at the bottom where you're like i'm not so sure but i think very creative players will definitely mm. be able to use that so i i really like that idea i think the only thing i maybe again maybe fun to play or role play is the disconcerting thing where you just like pull off like oh here friend here Try this and you know, pulling off a flower or yeah. whatever from your head. Yeah. No, eat it. It's good. It's homegrown. And you're like, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like someone picking a scab and saying, "Want to taste? <laughs> want to taste? Yeah, exactly." Oh, do you wanna do you wanna take some drugs? <laughs> I've, got, <laughs> I've got the right blossom for it. I've got some proper fungus going up here. This is gonna be great. Um, there's, there were, I think um, the thing that I thought with the warp blossom is doors are no longer a problem, and therefore mm. I'm gonna take this because I fucking doors that's it it's a door okay fuck it i have warp blossom it it's fine yeah oh, it's gone and yeah yeah how many times um equal to proficiency bonus so you start off with about two then yeah which is not which is quite a good amount all the, yeah all the way up to five i think when you get to level mm. 20 from what i remember so yeah so it's pretty not bad and then yeah getting them on getting back on the long rest so mm. yeah, and yeah you can choose any of them i think yeah. which is good some, some of the stuff later on it's like uh, you pick this and you can change it with each level up or or, or change yes. it on it per long rest whereas it's just like you have this choice which I think is quite nice as well because then again you, you you might see a situation where you're like oh actually this blossom would use better for this as well mm-hmm. um, the only thing I wanted to mention as well is plant nature um, so yeah so as a creature type you gain the you are a plant which is a great <laughs> great yes. one sentence <laughs> yes I did like that as well because actually it's going to affect how your your like control uh, people, I guess, and also, um, what's the other one? Hallow, not hallow. Am I thinking of hallow? Oh, what's the one where you 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 sort of? Oh, it's gone straight out of my head now. Uh, not hex, but it's a bad one. It's not bless. It's it's one of those sort of things. And oh, I'm sorry, it's gone. It, right. I'm, it will come back. You know, it's that sort of thing. It will come back. So no worries. But I think mm. so. You he says you are a plant. It doesn't say you are a plant humanoid or anything like that. No. So you. As, as a result, for these creature types, you will get the strengths and weaknesses of what a plant is. So presumably, uh, it doesn't make it clear here, but I, I would assume that as a plant, you will be vulnerable to fire. Um, yes. <laughs> as a result, uh, but but stronger in other things. And you get something called plant nature, which is your uh, offers the following benefits. So you have resistance to poison and radiant damage. Uh, yeah. You spend at least what? If- yes. <laughs> oh, blight. There you go. Sorry. You got it. It came got to it. me. There it is. Sorry. Yeah. Perfect. Blight. Perfect. 
but yeah, so, so so but you're right. Certain spells won't affect this creature because it'll be like uh, dominate person. It's mm. Technically, not a person. You know, uh, charm person can't charm mm. it. It's not a person. So okay. all these little things that again, as a DM, you might want to check the spells of uh, before you, mm. you if, if they're using a creature like this. And I think again, fey bound as well. That's just fey as mm. well. That's not fey human or fey humanoid, etc. Um, but yeah, so this is the thing for the the, the green seer was uh, you if you if you spend at least one hour under bright natural sunlight or four hours under moonlight in a day, you don't need to eat. <laughs> That's like, Makes like, sense. Ooh. So, and that I would assume, unless you're doing like a big deep dungeon crawl, or unless you yeah. explicitly say like, oh, the weather's really bad or something like mm. that. That. Um, that that's kind of solves that problem. I think that's just a really interesting thing like, where I like the idea of your player character going, I'm just gonna go stand in some water for a bit. Why? Well I just need to absorb some water <laughs> through my roots. <laughs> I just gotta I don't know, I just gotta just stand <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah, for an for an hour. I just yeah. So yeah. again, it's really cool. And then and then you do get the, the benefit of uh, that meditation thing that um, elves get as well. So you mm. really need to uh, remain you remain semi conscious for four hours for mm. resting, so which I thought was interesting. So yeah, so yeah. Th those those sort of two new uh, the lineages, are, I think yeah. they are quite interesting. Again, I think, like you said, well, there's some bits where we're like, hmm, not so sure about that. But ultimately, yeah. I, I, I do love the idea of having uh, almost, like, I guess green seers in my head, again, like you said, that, that people that are made out of plants, so a bit very dryad-like um, spirits in some way. But I, yeah, I'm just imagining someone's just covered in leaves, really, mm. <laughs> and hiding in, in the shadows and stuff. But I yeah, I, I think both of them I, I really, really like. So uh, why don't we go on to subclasses? Was there any mm -hmm. subclasses that you that stood out to you? Uh, I'll, I'll just say again, there is so much in this book. So there's, there, they've done uh, a subclass for each of the, I'm going to say, 11 classes. I don't know if that's true off the top of my head. There are 11 classes because I roll a d12, re-roll a 1. Oh, look at that. Amazing. <laughs> I think so, I, or is it just a detail? No, oh crap! I think there's actually more. Look at us being experts. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I forget. I would have to look at my notes. Yeah, but there's a lot. Yeah, there is a lot. There are um, so there are thirteen. There are thirteen. There we go. There, there we are, go. Yeah, there are thirty. Well, now, now, now we all know there's definitely. Th so for this one, there's obviously thirteen subclasses, one for each uh, class that mm. they have created. So is there one that any any one of these that stood out to you at all, Hamilton? Yeah. Um. I liked um, the mirror domain cleric. I thought mm. it was. Um, I thought it was quite interesting. It obviously kicked off. It goes in hand in hand with the adventure and the de delight they talk. The domain of delight they talk about, which is dualis, which we might mm -hmm. get onto a bit later. But um, which is the mirror domain. But it just obviously it kicked off immediately. As I said, it's Snow White mirror mirror on the wall. You know, it's all that yes. sort of. It's playing off those sorts of themes again, which I I, I liked and. It's basically the cleric who, uh, so the word is, the mirror domain is devoted to the ideals of truth and self-reflection. Those who follow this domain craft a magical mirror that deflects harm, reflects a healing light, and connects them to knowledge. Uh, mm. Which is that sort of mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the greatest of yes. them all sort of, sort of feeling. Um, and so you get uh, you, you get some special spells, as you, always, as you do with your domain, uh, which are sort of mirror image and shatter and sort of mislead, you know, quite... Um, quite clear mm. and obvious ones um then you get these um you have to create this mirror through a sort of one hour ritual yes. and once you've done that you sort of you've got it until you sort of let go of it or summon it you can sort of dispel it mm -hmm. um and it gives you you've got this this lovely little table of uh, mirror appearances ah, just, they love their tables don't they they oh, do yeah again yeah sort of ornately carved wooden frame holds a circular mirror or uh, glass and mirrors wider at the top and tapers it approaches the bottom. I'm imagining a sort of Venetian mirror. Do you know those Venetian mirrors, which mm. are layered, very Art Deco y, with a bit of Renaissance twist to them? Lovely. Absolutely. Sort of um, and so you get a mirror deflection, which is uh, if you were hit by, a hit by a ranged spell attack, you may use your reaction and your source mirror to deflect all the damage back onto the caster or another creature you see, which is quite cool. Like, you know. I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever sticks. <laughs> sticks to, Back uh, to you. To bounce, bounce of you. Sticks off. I can't remember. <laughs> like, I can't remember what's on there. But, yeah. I, but I, I guess it. I will say it was, it's within 30 feet of you. So yes. that that's what they yeah. say. But still, that is pretty cool. I love mm. that idea. And yeah, like you were going to say, like uh, that chosen te chosen creature becomes the target of that attack using mm. the same roll. So, mm. you know, they could roll really high, like a natural 20, but you deflect it and it goes back to them. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. oh, whoops. 
It's just the sort of I'm imagining the Iron Man, uh, you know, like uh, laser out of his hand, and then it kind of you get the mirror, you know, you get um, Captain America's shield, and it goes bing bing off onto someone else. Sort of. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Got those vibes as well that you just suddenly, you know, your hand. You, yeah, you can uh, you can make it, your mirror appear and disappear. So you just like hand yeah. over, and then just it just appearing. Oh, like it's again, quite, very, it's very cool. cool. It's very cool. It's very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the reflection one, which is if you help with a ranged spell, you can use your reaction and your sorcery. It's a reaction as well, which I think is um, is uh, just a, kind of interesting because obviously then it does take away other reactions as well, which is yes. good. But it's quite nice mm-hmm. to have something that's very reaction heavy. I like I like playing on those those things a bit more than um, than the, a lot of people just make things bonus actions. That's all, and I think it's quite fun to have more reaction play mm. in the game because it makes it much more back and forth feeling of a, of a battle because sometimes Absolutely. it's very much I'm gonna it's very much turn based JJ J, uh, you know JRPG you know like I'm gonna take my turn now I take your turn but yeah. I like that sort of back and forth uh so sorry the reflection one is the new uh you you hit with the range spell attack you use reaction your source mode reflect all the damage as healing towards mm. another target the, the new target regains hit points equal to the damage that would have been dealt no additional effects on the spell transfer to the new target. How cool is that? Like very cool. Yeah, I I think, like you said, like I think with this, yeah, I I totally agree with what you're saying about the reaction things. The only one that I can think of reaction, or the only two spells I can think of reaction which is used very regular is like shield. Yes. So you get that extra AC, or the other one that's gone out of my head. See, it all, it all goes out of my yeah. head quickly. Uh, is counter spell. Yes, um, to, and those again. That's that again. That sort of back and forth sort of thing. So yeah, mm. I like this as a reaction. So yeah. You see the damage coming, and you're just like, oh no, and then you you shift it off, and you only have enough energy to do that once, because then you could get hit by something else, because you're getting rid of one damage, and then possibly opening yourself up for more things, so like attacks yeah. of opportunity and stuff. So and these are all range stuff as well. Is this nothing? Uh, if someone's up close to you, mm. then you can't do that. You can't think. So I, I thought that was interesting. And yeah, range spell attack as well. So it's not like ranged weapons or anything like it is yes. spells it's definitely so. it does limit it a bit but it, which makes sense but i, makes I really sense. like it and yeah, the other ones are sentinel is always used a lot as well sentinel because mm. if you're a pally you just sort of grab the sword out they're not going or, anywhere stay here yeah. <laughs> and there's the other one that i think that's also what um monks can do as well but they have a lot more reactions which makes again a lot more sense because it's much more back and forth which i quite mm-hmm. like but yeah I, and i think clerics it's a, it's a good i think it was a good one for clerics i could have seen it as a paladin sort of oath as yes. well um something to do with like a mirror d- domain oath i thought was fun but yeah mm. it really works well and th- there's other things in there that are really great but i think they're the key the key points of it yeah definitely and then yeah i was gonna say yeah the other ones are like just they're just helpful in other ways oh, yeah. but the, the one at the end the pierce the veil so mm. level 15 uh, level 17 sorry when you do mirror deflection you deal maximum damage rather than the result of the attack roll likewise mirror reflection regains uh, hit points equal to the max damage that could have been dealt so that's level 17 obviously you're high p- 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 yeah. power players so i like that in a sense of like you get to the high level and you're still using this because i can imagine if you're like oh it's fine they'll be okay but actually mm. being able to use your reaction and then, yeah it's reaction so you get this back on every single every single turn of um combat uh yeah, yeah. the new order new round there you go the round of combat so yeah that is i feel that's such a valuable thing and yet yeah, you're right it doesn't because it's a reaction, it doesn't take mm. away from you doing spells and doing other things. I think sometimes when you get new subclasses, it suddenly becomes all about these extra things, mm. and you always have to remember those things. And like, but you could also do spells. I mean, the clerics could always hit with a quarter staff if they really need to, but usually they're going to yeah. be uh, spell slinging. So that's mostly, like you said, their actions going to be taken up, and maybe very little for bonus actions. Whereas mm. this, I quite like this, like you said, reaction, but it's purely on these two things. Uh, yeah. Everything else, like the other two things, are just like helpful in like, oh, you get a bit more damage here, or or yeah. you can um, uh, yeah. cast rituals without exactly. preparing for them. So I think I love that as as a thing. Like it's mm. a cool concept. We all we yeah. all love a good mirror. <laughs> yeah. And and it's very simple. I think that's the thing I always find with sub- subclasses is sometimes there's so much in them that mm. I'd forget about all the good stuff. So yeah, this mirror domain so simple. You literally have two things, mm. and I think they're really useful two things as well. So the only yeah. thing I thought was missing. Yeah. I can say that was of it did say like um, it re- reflecting light and connects them to knowledge. I didn't feel mm. it did. I thought they could have just played a little bit more on the knowledge thing. That's where I, the, the only thing I would have added was something that like a portent, like a, maybe. Mm, so or, or, you use the mirror mm. to 
in, I mean, it gives you those. I guess it's the mirror spells that you gain, which is the knowledge. Do you, do you want to explain what portent is? Because I know what it is, but if uh, oh, people sorry. are watching, yeah, go yeah. For so it. portent is um, the ability to store roles, basically. So you can you can make some roles and you can store them, and it, you you make your portent roles. I think I can't remember how many you get uh, at levels, but basically, let's say you have two portent uh, tokens you can use. I go and roll two dice now, and I say, all right, then my portent portent dice. One of them could be a natural twenty. I'm going to save that for later. And one of them could be a, a four, but at least you could give that you with that portent. No matter what the role is, you can either give or or, or use that that role. So, say someone is attacking you, they roll a natural twenty. You could use your four portent and say, "I'm going to give them the four. Mm -hmm. because what you're in the sort of flavor for it is that you see into the future slightly, mm. and with that, you know they're about to hit you with a critical hit, but you know that they're going to go to your left shoulder, and you shift out the way because you know it's wow. do your matrix move and and, <laughs> and and vice versa you can say all right you hit with a with a four you roll a four and you go i'm going to use my natural 20 right now portent which is that you get the scene for the future see that they're going to do the shifty mm -hmm. and so you hit them sort of thing and um i just felt like a really good one to have added mm -hmm. in maybe for the mirror because the mirror could show you, you see alternate ways yeah, yeah. Exactly. i don't know something along those lines that you look into the mirror and it shows you your future you know your next move or it gives you mm. two alternate it gives you an alternate view in the mirror dimension mm. uh, of what's happening i think like I, that. I think that's a fair point i guess the only thing i guess for me because obviously i can imagine that stacking with the um uh, for your deflection and reflection mm. if you had some really good good roles you might want them to try and hit you so that mm. you could deflect or, or uh, actually reflect. yeah you could stack that couldn't you could i know but it would be an but, additional oh, reaction only... So uh, yes, oh yes, you're right. So mm, ah, so you couldn't do it. So that's yeah. very fair. I think what I would say, I guess, if they if they didn't want to do that, is maybe just giving yourself proficiency in intelligent mm. checks relating to certain things. But yes. I agree. I I think I I think for me, I quite like how it's simple it is. But I agree. There's not much about the knowledge side of it. It's more reflecting, which maybe is a bit too d in that sort of thing. But yeah, I think that's a very it's, good point. I think it's still very good. I just it was just something that came to me when I was reading it. No, I, was like, I think oh, completely fair. Goodness. Completely fair. Um, so what right. one do you want to? Which one came? Oh, I am so glad you asked. So, <laughs> Hamilton, I, you had, we had a conversation earlier this week, and you were like, Fiona, you did a D, D, a Dragon Plus article on Pardon Oaths, and you didn't use mine. And I was like, <laughs> sorry. Well, I'm, guess what? I'm not, I'm not going to talk about your Pardon Oaths. <laughs> <of everyone. laughs> I want to say that I was, it was in jest. <laughs> yes, it was in jest. It was in jest. But as Slightly. a result, I'm still, I'm, I'm still, I'm still not going to talk about your Pardon Oath. I'm going to talk about this one instead. <laughs> That's I actually realised I talked about it on last week's episode anyway. So oh, did you? I, did. <laughs> I just keep talking about it, so go and buy it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so, yes, so the Pal uh, Paladin Oath of Beauty. Yeah. Um, so, Pal so uh, again, I'm sure people do know this, but just in case you don't, so Paladins have these things called oaths, and they to sort of symbolise their sort of philosophy and what they strive for. Normally, Paladins strive for a certain like philosophy or, or goal, usually good orientated, but sometimes mm. not not so good orientated. And these can take on different things. And it's their ideas of justice and, and righteousness. And obviously that is open for interpretation. That's so what's great about Paladins mm. is that you can it could be on anything. And so this is this one for uh, the uh, Paladin Oath of Beauty. They have these um and in each sorry oath there's uh, they usually have three to four tenants, as it were. So for this mm. it just gives you a flavour of what it is. So for for the Oath of Beauty, you have reveal reveal beauty in all things. Beauty does not take one form. As with all things capable of beauty, spark the capability in everything and everyone you see. Uh, which I love that as a sort of starting point is that uh, these people, these creatures, uh, these these paladins, they are like striving for beauty and everything. So they're like, we we see that little spark, we want to make it happen, mm -hmm. and it can be in objects, it can be in people, it can be in buildings, it can mm -hmm. be in anything. And certainly in the mm -hmm. flavor text, it talks about the dance, yeah. It's like natural beauty or beauty in something that mortals have created. It could literally be architecture. It's any of these mm -hmm. things. Second tenant is eliminate ugliness, <laughs> which is <laughs> it's like beautiful ugliness. Um, so when something is so devoid of beauty that it has become ugly, rid the world of its menace. Mm. Uh, beauty cannot flourish where ugliness grows, which I, I love. I think it's such an interesting concept because obviously you could intersperse these words with like eliminate evil, mm. eliminate capitalism, mm. you know, yeah. uh, that sort of thing. Um, and then third tenant, maintain your own beauty. <laughs> yes. Beauty begins within the body. 
yeah. you cannot spread beauty in the world unless you are capable of recognizing your own beauty <laughs> so, yeah. it's your own self-worth you know yes you can even yes, that sort of thing <laughs> To be honest, I do feel I am an architect paladin over beauty. That is what oh, I am in my everyday life. Yay. I try to eliminate ugliness of architecture mm-hmm. and promote beauty. So only if I could go on some sort of crusade where I could demolish some of the buildings. Just like rush in and it's like, bro, this is so ugly. <laughs> there's actually a there's a, a this is another tangent. Sorry, but there's a go Batman. Um, there's an evil, uh, evil like there's a villain, a Batman villain called the Architect. Who um, and oh, the storyline yeah. is it's really beautiful actually. So there's a thing on the online about someone wrote about it, which is very well put together. But basically, Gotham is overrun by modernist architecture, <sighs> and so like there's all these like tall buildings that look all like um, modern and uh, and like have no like a, a really stripped back and simplistic and minimalist. And he mm-hmm. hates it, so he starts destroying these buildings. Um, <laughs> but what it does is it, it like the whole story kind of the arc starts with it this world, the sort of city looking a bit like that sort of modern day city and mm. only by him destroying them does it create Gotham because it shows all the beautiful gothic buildings that create Gotham. How interesting. So actually, I don't know, it's sort of a, it just made me think of that. I love that, but that, but isn't that interesting because I think you could easily t- interpret that into being like a paladin oath sort of thing, like to the point where it's too extreme. Yes. You're tearing down whole cities, people, where people live mm, yeah. to create something almost like a, like this madman in quotation marks to build yeah. something new and the big mm. bad evil is actually somebody who's striving for their own things so i think oh that's such yeah. a cool idea on that and then yeah the, quickly the final one on that tenant is show beauty to the world so be an example to others mm. let your beauty brighten the world calling people to your cause like a lighthouse on the coast um Lovely, isn't it yeah it's, it's- yeah. It's good, and the artwork for it is great. In, in my head, yeah. like as a result, because again, you're thinking of beauty. Obviously, interpreting this how you want. I interpret this as a valley girl paladin. Like let's <laughs> let's just go shopping, but it's super yeah, positive. It's totally amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got like, here. We go. This is my classic oh boy. So bring it up. Stop. So bloody cathartic when I get to you know do okay. my beacon of beauty. You know, oh my or God. my horror of beauty <laughs> uh, hey hey sorry love yourself <laughs> okay. love yourself no 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 but this is and, and this is the thing i think as soon as you're like as soon as you're able to do a voice on something you're like you've got you've got a character you've got something yeah. in there so i think th- I, I see this almost i mean i can even see this as like um like a disney guest on type character yeah. you know that sort of like ha ha like sort of thing like yeah. that and yet more tables in this like what is the beauty interest you have so mm. any, everything from inner beauty to outer beauty mm. <laughs> uh, architecture natural beauty supernatural beauty magical beauty yeah. so you could even have i guess because if you wanted to do a side quest or something like that which is mm. about m- cosmetic magical cosmetic stuff that's going wrong yeah. and stuff and have like a, a a knight that's like no you're perfect just the way you are and let yeah. me show you how <laughs> you <know? laughs> Uh, she's all that <laughs> of, she of. is all that yeah um but yeah i'll just quickly go through the 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 two things i thought was interesting so uh with paladins you get something called channel divinity which is their sort of main mm. feature a bit like those uh, domain stuff from the the mirror domain with the cleric so you have mm. uh, at level three you get blinding beauty as an action you force all each creature of your choice that you can see within 30 feet to make a wisdom saving throw on a fail the creature becomes blinded for one minute because of your beauty do you know what this is <laughs> This what? is Zoolander. Yes. It's so beautiful. <laughs> That's what it is, right? It's you do your blue steel moment. For yeah, sure. it's big, like, yeah. <laughs> it's Magnum, isn't it? Magnum's the one he does. Blue steel's what he always does, and then Magnum's mm, the one Magnum. that he's been prefer- perfected for years. <laughs> uh, and then you also get something called center attention. So you can use uh, um, on a, as a bonus action, you gain advantage on any charisma checks or saving throws for the next ten minutes. Uh, as, a, as a bonus action so again using that at the beginning of combat you know, maybe you rush in going mm. out and then and then i guess yeah maybe because um, charisma checks because it's unlike i guess for persuasion and stuff it's fine but for saving throws again if you're in the fey wild uh, there's a lot of uh, fey use lots of uh, charisma mm. uh, spells and they'll ha- so it's probably good for that can i also um, say what this makes me think of as well again absolutely. I'm sorry go for it. bringing no, in go for stupid it. things do it strict haven mean girls a whole group <sighs> of <laughs> of Paladin, Oath of Beauty, Mean Girls group, right? And they centre attention, they cast that just as they walk through the door. Oh Wednesdays we wear pink and then walk in. You know, that's what it, you know, it's so, sorry, that's what it made me think of. No, so when I do my I, Strixhaven campaign, oh. I want four people all being Oath of Beauty doing Mean Girls. We need, yeah, that, that needs to happen. I, oh man, Mean Girls is such a great film. <laughs> anyway, 
That's oh, I didn't even clock that Strixhaven would be great for that. That oh, brilliant. Sorry. Um, no, no, no. I think it's great. Uh, oh, yeah. The final thing I want to talk about this because mm. obviously we're gonna move on and stuff. Um, but um, restore beauty. So at level fifteen, you gain uh the ability to restore be- beauty with your touch. As an action, you can use one hit point of your lay on hands uh pool. So every uh, paladin will also have a pool of hit points, which you mm. uh, most people will know of this. Um to uh, cause the effect of a mending spell on an object so you can mend items and stuff like that. So that's quite nice. Additionally, yeah. though, when you use Lay on Hands on a person, each hit point healed restores one year of vitality to the person's face. Um, <laughs> it's the oil uh, of Olay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just like cosmetic sort of style, yeah. like getting rid of the wrinkles and stuff. Um, this effect, it does say, this effect only reduces the appearance of the age to the beginning of adulthood. So you don't get baby-faced uh, yeah, grandmothers <laughs> or something like that. But as a result, um, the creature who is, happens to gains advantage on the next charisma check due to the boost in confidence it has gained. <laughs> it's great. So, I mean, this is, there is so much that I want to do with this this paladin. I think it's, I, it's one of the best. I just, I just love that idea. Like, it's, it is like in my head, it's like a, a the make under from a oh, yeah. stock Mario Void or anything like that. And it's like, I look, I look so beautiful. And like, yes, Gok you Gwan. basically got one. It a, is got one. That is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So That's I a just call back to, to people. That, that, that is, know. that is. A, oh, hey, yeah. I, we could have done Trini and, Sus- Trini and Susanna, yes. but they would be the evil paladins of beauty. <laughs> let's face it, Gokwan is the good paladin of beauty. <laughs> yeah. But yes, so and those are the main things I picked out from that because I just thought it's just really interesting. And I think if you want to play uh, like a, a holy knight, that's not necessarily like zealous and like good righteousness and stuff. Beauty is an interesting option, and yeah. I just feel like there's so much you can do with that as a result. Hundred percent, hundred percent. There, there is a great one, and actually, there's and I'm seeing the time, and there are lots that you kind of think, oh, I'd love to talk more about. But I think but, there, there are some great ones. Is there any others that you think were that you really want to mention? I, I was going to give a quick shout out possibly to the yeah. College of Seasons Bard. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I think that's a very Feywild stuff. You've got obviously like the, the different seasons and stuff. You mm. have um, a t- table for rolling melodies and stuff, but it's also like uh, for certain features, you can have you can have a spring version and then mm. when you level up, you can change it if you want to be a summer one, a autumn one, a fall one. Yeah. Uh, and then later on, there's another one where you can pick a certain one as well. and they do different things I can't yeah. remember the details just now and obviously if we go into it we'll talk about it for ages it, uh, but I, just, yeah. I, I like that idea of like seasonal changes because that is very Feywild and stuff exactly. um, I think the only thing I would add to it would be as a DM is say that and I'd ask the player obviously they'd want to do this but make it so that whatever the season is that's your that's what you're in sort of thing and make it so that it transitions mm. as you as the seasons go so that they, if they mm. want to do that I think that could be quite a nice little addition Absolutely. As, a, as a variant um, yeah, is there, is there a shout out you want to do for any yeah, other Yeah, the only other shout out I'd give is the Rogue Reveler, which mm. is just basically just a raconteur who's just uses intoxicating everyone else. Uh, and it sort of reminded me, and it just reminded me of a great character who I always thought was a, a rogue. And I did a sort of thing on Twitter about if you were going to play a rogue. And I always think Marion Ravenwood is one of my favourite characters mm. um, from, if people don't know from Indiana Jones, uh, Fate of Atlantis. <sighs> She's the, the sort of the. the the person who owns the the, the the amulet that comes to staff and um she's great and i just it just made me think of her drinking people under the table and sort of taking their money and sort of using that the old spy trick of um i don't know if you know this they drink olive oil drink a load of olive oil so that you go into drinking contest oh. and it's, it coats your your stomach and it stomach. gives you if you drink enough of it it can give you at least a few hours of lucidity so that you and enough time if you wanted to sort of not drink it, let's say, but allow yourself to become drunk later. So you can go look Ooh. like you're getting drunk, keep drinking. It doesn't get absorbed into your body for a while. And then... Yeah, um, interesting. Yeah. That's kind well, of the, so it kind of reminded me of that. So well, next trip. next time I'm at MI5 headquarters, I know exactly <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs> exactly what you're doing. Yeah, and you can ah. use exotic spirits and stuff. So it's it just a fun one and it's worth looking at. If but, you and that's... You know what? I'd completely... I completely forgot Indiana Jones films were a thing, and I forgot how good a character she is in that. Actually, really and is a great character. Really, yeah, really, really. I mean, it's a great film, but yeah, it, yeah. yeah that that first one was great. Anyway, anyway, I'm sure. Again, yes. I'm sure there'll be an Indiana Jones themed episode at some point. <laughs> yes. uh, Shall we briefly talk mm. about the backgrounds, like fleetingly? You can I think talk about both... them. <laughs> okay, it's got clowns. I'm sorry. <laughs> So there are, in, no, no, no. I think it's interesting. So for this yeah. again, 
because it's such a big compendium there's two mm. backgrounds that they've come up with there's one uh, called dreamers which is this idea obviously like you you have visions almost like a cassandra s sort of moment where you you could have stuff that predicts the future or not and then there's lots of tables for that and uh, i thought that was okay i think it makes sense for the fairy world but then you have something called clowns now um again i think it's fitting very much with the so the, the carnival theme they have for the mm. fairy wild and <clears throat> Excuse me. When I was reading through the tables, you could get all these different kinds of clowns. That in you th- in your head, I was thinking like, oh, maybe some sort of like silent film star. So you think of Charlie Chaplin, mm. Buster Keaton, all these sort of things. And it doesn't have to be an, an actual clown. It could be someone who is the class clown and stuff. But and I'm only going to show this up because I printed the page out because I printed the whole thing out. The artwork for the beginning of it is a terrifying like sort of it like clown, <laughs> like with like a, like definitely like. Yeah. There's definitely something not right about it, and you don't know what it is. Sinister. Uh, very sinister. So maybe not one for. If, I know there are some people who are, I can't remember what the phobia uh, name for it is called. If you're not into that sort of thing, don't. I w- wouldn't just don't don't do it. Like it's not, you don't gain much out of it. And, you know, it's a background, so you you get yeah. like, is it sleight of hand, acrobatics, um, mm. props for your act. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, balls to juggle, hanger cheese, noisemakers, or puppets. Could you imagine somebody bringing a puppet along and then just talking through that puppet? It, you're talking through your character through a puppet. No, it's. God, that's it. <laughs> Sorry, they just. It's, I mean, I know it, Carnival is all fine, but it's just the clown bit of it. It's just the, the creepy speaking bit. It's just, yeah. Hello, children. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know what? I, I understand why they put it in and it totally makes sense. Yes, it totally uh, does. Not for, yeah. not for either of us as DMs, unfortunately. Yes, so, right. sorry, no clowns in our campaign. Done. Yep. All right. Um, it's, you know, they've done other stuff. So, like, obviously, yep. uh, uh, specified spells, feats mm. as well, which, we, again, we're going to gloss over. Mm. But, Hamilton, I wanted to talk about a specific magic item, which yes. I saw and thought was interesting. So, on page 42, if you're mm-hmm. following along at home, there mm. is something called the Deck of Fortunes slash the Deck of Torment. And mm. it is sort of built a bit like uh, what seems at first like a, a deck of many things. But the idea is that you have a full deck of cards. And then when you pull it out, uh, a magical fey dealer appears, which I would think if that happened, you would suspect something was up. <laughs> like you just have a box of cards and mm. essentially you then play poker with this yeah. creature and you can pull as many cards. And there's a little thing like if you pay a certain much amount of money compared to your level, you can change what card it is and all that sort of thing. And then depending on what your hand is, you can get certain things. So you can always go through just like, you mm. just have a very high card, you can just get um, advantage, uh, or you get you find an individual treasure if you do your next intelli- mm. um, next investigation or perception check that's a higher than a 10, all the way up to sort of like, stuff like four of a kind, which is a random item in your possession gains one minor and one major benefit property from the tables of the DM's handbook. So almost coming a wondrous item, mm. uh, which is quite good. Uh, a straight flush, so during the next seven days, you can c- may call upon the DM to grant the benefit of a seventh level spell of their choosing. Uh, if the flush is royal, you may do this three times, but no more than once per day. That's that's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, if you get five of a, five of a kind, um, you gain one d three wishes. One d three wishes that that work like the spell wish. Wait, how um, do you get five of a kind? I you don't think you can. I, yeah, I was just I literally just thought that out loud, but I think. Does he the because you have jokers, don't you? I don't know. I anyway, th- th- yeah. regardless, that is still pretty cool. Yeah. However, um, this sort of this fey like density that sort of is the dealer. There is a twist to this, um, mm. and you'd only really find out uh, again through doing experimentations with the deck, which is always really dodgy, mm. or using the spell legend lore, which reveals the fates of the previous owners of the deck. The last of which includes now the enigmatic en- dealer. And essentially what happens is that when you deal a hand, the DM will take the sum of all the five cards with uh, jacks, ki- uh, queens, kings, going like mm. 11, 12, etc. If there's 30 or more, uh, there's a, a creature that gets, you know, can get more, you know, certain, lower, lower it is, little things benefit the DM. Mm. Until you get stuff like 50 points or more, uh, the, the, that player is petrified. And if you are not restored after 24 hours, you are transported immediately to the Feywild to a, into a garden of similar statues. And you dec- decorate you decorate the grounds of the deck's capricious creator, which as a story sounds yeah. amazing. But then yeah. 60 or more points, next time you're reduced to zero hit points, you die. 
and your soul takes the place of the dealer who is now free to continue their destined afterlife. So that, again, be careful what you wish for. Being like, it's just so cool. Playing that game, keep wanting to get those wishes. Oh, and but like again, you wouldn't know this until you died. So this might you might you might play this Mm. and you go, great, I got the wishes, great, 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 and then just so happens like maybe several sessions long, you die and you go, oh shit, because you've made a note somewhere. You go, no, sorry, (laughs) yeah, and you can't be brought back or anything like that unless you you was it um. You cannot be resurrected until another soul takes your place, or if the deck's creator frees you, rendering the deck mundane. So having its own quest to go, go sort it out. I like, like it though. I really like it. It's oh, very good. Very good. No, I just think that stuff like that, where it's it's that little bit of chance, a little bit of whimsy, like yeah, like mm. any of those games, like you know, like um, try and find the the ball in the cups and stuff mm. like that. But you're risking so much more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So cool. Ah. The- they actually can I can I skip to two a little bit ahead then because we're on that yes. and we can go back just yes, because you're it. talking about games. There are a yes. few games in this which I think yes. are quite fun. I think that just it just sticks on a, a, a riff. So yeah. in one of the um, encounters, which is like a mini sort of um, actually a mini sort of adventure, really more than just mm-hmm. an encounter, I'd say the way they're they're calling them. Um, mm-hmm. So there's one called a Midsummer's Night's Festival, and so you mm. attend this festival and it has carnival games. So there's a bull strength, and you can do sort of um, attempt a strength check to push the ball into the farthest circle possible, winning ten tickets. So you gain tickets and stuff like that, Ooh, like a proper carnival. Cool. There's a hayfield havoc. A group of sheep roam in a field. Characters can attempt a wisdom hand- animal handling check to corral the sheep into a closure. You know, oh. sort of like fun little <laughs> games. That's like really that. cool. Uh, Lady Luck. There's another card game. There's a magic missile game, which is a large. It's basically darts. Ocean's Bounty, where you can do fishing and ah. a Wheel of Chance sort of thing, and you can win tickets on that. And then there's one thing that I... And then the tickets buy you prizes, like a Potion of Healing or um, uh, some plush toys of a Kraken, a Purple Worm, a Manticore, an Owlbear and a Dragon. Um, uh, you can also get... Then there's festival food like berry pie and spiced wine. Or a lucky clover, which is another one of the items. Mm. And then finally, on this games front, and I don't yes. know if you clock this, no. there is Modron chess. <gasps> really? Now, no. Yes. I know oh. you love Modrons. Right? I love Modrons. No, I didn't so see that. So they reorganised a chess piece set, and this is under the Gloaming Gale and Goldie, which is actually a really good adventure. I, I, I've only read parts of it, but I quite like the characters they've created. Quite interesting. But you play chess where you've got. Quadrones as rooks, duodrones as knights, tridrones as bishops, and obviously pentadrones and um, as the kings and queens. And then you, uh, these actual characters play. You play big chess with these, um, with uh, Gloaming Gale and Goldie are like the queens. So they're actual players, and it's like you play live big chess with little mini modrons. Oh my god. I know. Oh my god! <laughs> I know exactly, and then you got monitors. I love obviously. modrons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I just quite liked that they've got a chess. So I, I want if someone wants to make a chess set out of modrons, I'll yes, buy please. It. <laughs> I've, it's gone. I bought, bought. Yeah. Oh. But then, yeah. Oh, but they would be because obviously on 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 the oh, I can't remember what their plane is called now. But everyone takes average damage. So when they take out another character, they probably have to take themselves out at the same time to <laughs> sort of. Sort of balance the equilibrium, so you just constantly oh, just. <laughs> oh yes, of course, yeah. That's they would hate it, wouldn't they? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's very good. <laughs> oh, but that's so cool, and uh, yeah, I love the idea. Like again, it's very carnival esque but that yeah, Midsummer mm. Night's Dream, that sort of always means that's so cool. Like having carnival mm. games, we, there's always we always have shopping episodes. We always have oh, there is yeah. a festival on. So yeah, if it's not in the Feywild, that's totally fine. But taking those stuff out is really cool, yeah. and I, I love the idea of winning like a plushy thing. Like plushy it doesn't, it's nothing into it, but it's such a, a lovely flavor thing, which we're all into let's face it <laughs> well, well let's go on to the flowers then so what mm. what what are the the flowers of the fey world the chapter's called so what what is it about it yeah so it gives you a, it's it kind of reminded me of witcher and animal crossing as i said to you of like mm-hmm. it gives you loads of little um sort of medicinal and uh, herbs and flowers that you can go and collect in the fey world that are sort of around there and you can make um uh, you can use a uh, herbalism kit or using intelligence checks to figure find these, but they all have their own wondrous and fabulous sort of effects that they can do. Mm. You know, so you know, you know, you want to be in the Feywild, you want to 
see what these flowers can do to you, <laughs> don't you, you basically? You, know, you just want to you want to get there and start eating whatever's on the ground. That, exactly. That's what our players yeah. do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's some like uh, the one that's like again. I, yeah, you said to me um, mm. Animal Crossing. For me, I was thinking like back in the day when Pokemon after the first iterations and stuff they were like we want to include berries so that it makes it stronger and I, I never use them but this I, I could definitely see using mm. stuff so the one again one that stood out to me was like uh, bold berry bulb the BBB um, mm. uh, you cannot be charmed or frightened you have advantage mm. on strength saving check uh, checks and saving throws and when you make a melee uh, attack using strength you can add a d4 to damage so it's just the idea of that bravado and that sort of like haha um yes. I thought that was quite good. Um, I like the, the crow feeder. Again, it was very, yes. it's a very dark one, but it's like flowers, black petals, rambles with drooping wings of a raven and appears to drip with unsettling black ink. As next, mm. you can throw this flower up to 15 feet. When you do a sphere of inky pollen ripples out in a 60 foot radius from where it landed, each hostile creature in there must take a constitution, make a constitution saving throw. A target takes 8d6 necrotic damage. That is a lot. You get one of those at a low level. That's a pretty... Every oh. creature in a 60 foot radius... I mean, that's it's a deep, lot. That is quite a lot. And and, and once the flower is released upon it, it withers. Uh, if a creature mm. treads this flower while it's growing out of the ground, though, the similar effect occurs, and all creatures in the six-foot radius. So if you, so it, it might be great to get. But if you're looking for it, it's a dangerous game. Sort of Absolutely, thing. yeah, and yeah, to to get one of these flowers as well, uh, or to identify it, you've got to make a DC 16 mm. uh, intelligence check. And and yeah, just to say that once you've picked it, uh, it's it's survives for like seven days and then waters but if it goes to any other plane after mm. 24 uh, oh no when it goes to any other plane it does wilter yes. after a while so I think I think that is interesting but oh, I, didn't, I didn't read I didn't read the end of that that idea that it's almost like a, a mine in a way and you're like yes. oh no <laughs> <laughs> exactly be careful where you where you do there's some other good ones the oculus I liked which just gives you that um, that was the one that was the one creepiest one for me it's got a little I thought eye that was super creepy in the yeah. petals and oh. um a will you've meant to receive visual information of his eye, which is normal vision and true sight up to 60 feet. Once you've accessed the flower's vision, it begins to decay and completely wilts in 24 hours, but um, it lasts up to seven days. And you could basically leave it as a sort of, um, basically like a little security camera. Sort of yeah. Thing, which is quite yeah. useful. Yeah, um, like like putting it in like um, a tavern or something that you're staying in and just like... You want to spy on it. someone, just, you know. Exactly. Put, yeah, no, it's quite, yeah. Yeah, I quite like it. Yeah. I quite liked uh, Toril's Bright Hope. Um, oh, so yeah. that's the one at the end. So it's like a, it's like a, a cloudy white moss. Uh, when a creature dies from something other than old age, <laughs> I think yeah, I like the fact you had to clarify. What, um, within 15 feet where the flower is planted, it returns that creature to life with one hit point, and then the flower wilts away. So it's like a one-off. Mm. This is the thing, which I think is amazing. Um, Phoenix down. Yeah. It is a phoenix down, absolutely. Um, and yeah, you can uproot the flower, and if you do that, press it against yourself or a creature within five feet, it, the target gains, regains uh, 3d8 plus four hit points. So again, it's like a, a quick save if they don't mm. within 15 feet. But I, I just like the idea that all is lost in this in this thing, that that person falls, uh, and then nobody, you know, oh God, what we're gonna do? And then they're, oh, they're back, and maybe they don't know why. <laughs> and they have to look around to see why, where you know a flower has wilted or something like that, and because yeah. that's because again, you need to be proficient in like nature or herbalism or something like that to mm. gain the use of this. Um, yeah. But I, I just love that as a little hidden thing, having like the well, idea of flowers and stuff. So. I feel it's something that missing for druids a bit, and I feel it's like and the herbalism and the sort of alchem. There's not really an alchemy class in in D and D that I. Not I mean, really, I mean, people have made them, but it's something yeah. that I always think is ripe for making, and this kind of allows that sort of play which i think is as i said it's in lots of rpg games and stuff like that that sort of alchemy you know it's in, in uh, skyrim and witcher and mm. all those ones and it just feels like it's adding a very critical part of of rpgs that, that hasn't been added so i really like that and um, mm. i'd like to more of it would be really good actually to be honest yeah i think because yeah you've got um 16 different flowers there mm. and you, i'm sure you could make up something your own just taking like a a simple magic item of some sort yeah. and then transferring it over to them like uh, a anything like that like you, you've got stuff like it's like there's like a glass orchid one which you mm. you crush and makes you invisible for an hour um so That's similar great. similar things there again really cool and yeah again all that flavor stuff as well you can go on a proper big hunt and looking at all these beautiful pictures of flowers and going <laughs> what can these make <laughs> yes exactly 100 mm. percent um cool uh we're getting very late in the day, so we are. Um, so, what what are you thinking as a final sort of send off? Uh, 
I think uh, all I would say that there's really cool fae portals. They're very much what you could imagine, but there's some really fun ones, and they have um, some really interesting effects of crossings that could cause mm. some fun things. I didn't know if you wanted to say anything on them. Yeah. So so yeah. So we we have spoken about this idea of fae crossings, so that they could be anything. Um, mm. It could literally be under a, a fallen trunk. You could swim across a lake, etc. We actually talked mm. about it in uh, season two, episode nineteen, because I looked that up earlier uh, with Darren Kenny talking about the Fey World mm. and the Shadowfell, and obviously we talked a little bit about the Fey World last week. But the idea of Fey crossing, so that if some, uh, you need to make a saving throw as you you cross of some description, and if you fail it, one of these effects happens. So again, people love their tables and stuff. So the ones that sort of stood out for me was that uh, you forget common, but you gain another language of your choice. Um, mm. Which I thought interesting. That could be good because, yeah. um, again, common. Uh, I guess in the Fey world, maybe common isn't a language there. Uh, you know, they they all mm. speak Sylvan or or, or even like um, just Elvish in general, which your character, your dwarven character, might not. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I quite liked. Um, there's there's some that I was like mm, interesting. So, uh, like you gain the creature type Fey and are bound to the laws of hospitality to always speak the truth. And seek permission before ent- entering like a home. Yeah. So your rogue is is fucked really <laughs> if you <strange>. get that. <laughs> um, but everything you can you... work the truth, can't you? That's the oh, yeah, little white lies. I think it's fine. I mean, you, so this is the thing as well. All these things are very role play esque. I think mm. um, everything you must say must rhyme. Um, each time you fail, I've you done take that once. In my game as well. I know. I, I was gonna say. I I've seen you do that in games. <laughs> I think it's great, but every time you fail, you take one psychic damage, just to That's remind to, you. Yeah, I did it in a one-shot before I did this, and I made it so that you had to take psychic damage. The only way that you can do it to stop people um, mm. yeah, failing it is evil. It's an yeah. evil thing to do to someone. <laughs> and then the final one, which I quite liked, is that you arrive later than the others travelling through the crossing at the same time. You look battered, missing a significant <laughs> amount of coin, and smell sus- suspiciously of booze, yet have no memory of what has occurred. Yes. So... I think that's always a cool one. So, like, if um, for mm. whatever reason your um, a player is missing from a session yeah. or something, and then they just appear, and in the, you could even have like a a, a quick like, let, let's do a quick yeah. one scene sort of thing. What happened? Yeah. But then nobody else knows what happened to them. And obviously, I just thought that was a very cool like little spotlight moment you could have with the players. So. That is very cool. That is yeah. really cool. I like that. Mm-hmm. I've done that. I've actually done that with just them getting drunk before, when someone's not been able to be there. Just said they went out reveling, reveling, and used the revelry table that's oh, online. Cool. There's a D one hundred one. I think it's quite good. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, and then do a little bit of an intro of like I had one where I rolled it and they woke up naked in a church, <laughs> and it's like <laughs> in, the, in some sort of temple. And so we just role played just a little scene of how the, the the cleric coming and going, what the fuck are you doing here? So I was like, what? What shit? What am I doing? And like. Having them to do it was quite fun, actually. And they're trying to hide. They tried to then... They saw them coming in, actually, and they, they were ranger. So they tried to hide. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they went into the vestibule to try and, and sort of stole the, the robe. But it actually turned out to be the robes of the person that they were hiding from. And so that was quite fun. They just had a lot of fun with it. So. That's amazing. I it love that. It was great. Yeah. Oh, that's that's awesome. I like... Yeah, and I was like... Um, oh, I can't remember his real name now. But the guy in community that comes in with pizza and everything's on fire. Yes. Because that's, yeah. that's the energy I see. Hundred um, I guess the only thing I want to quickly, I know we've, oh, we've definitely mm-hmm. ran over time, but very, very quickly, because yeah. again, I, I'm sure people will look at this as a, one thing we talked about a little bit last week, um, very briefly, is this idea of butterflies and this sort of mm. motif of wings going out. And I did want mm. to do a quick shout out to one of the, the again, in the Beast Jury, yeah. um, so oh, many some cool, great, some some, great ones, yeah. Some really interesting ones, and I highly, highly recommend having a look through those because they're just interesting. I think yeah. is this idea of having butterflies of the Feywild, with which are again they act almost like as small creatures, which can be swarms, etc. And you think, oh, that's really lovely, and mm. then it, and then you turn a page and it goes, and now for the butterfly cle- queen, <laughs> woo! Yeah, exactly. Hundred percent. None can resist her command. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and it's just this whole lore over two yeah. pages of this idea that somebody's chosen and then they're taken, cocooned up for fourteen days, and they emerge as the Butterfly Queen. <laughs> yeah. It's great. It is great. It's great. Uh, and then a shout out to the Beauty of the Beast with the candlings. Yes, the candlings are so cool. This idea of little floating candles, and yeah. they, there's some inter- again with all these monsters as well. They have little adventure hooks about where you could put them in to places, and so. 
they're almost like um, spotted where Will of the Wisps have been seen, and it's almost like mm. a, I don't want to say a gang mentality, but Will of the Wisps obviously are are been seen traditionally as evil things, mm. and then you're like these creatures are they're think, are they neutral? Uh, typically lawful mm. neutral, so they will come and mm. help. They, in this adventure, yeah. you go and try and clear out some Will of the Wisps, and some candlelings come and help. So this idea of like mm. bobbing strange lights and then candles coming in, <laughs> it's just marching in a little line. You can imagine it. We are. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, no, it's true. It's, I, I like the like, go away, go away. You won't yeah. have the thing today. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, there are some great ones. I, 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 I could go on. Like, Genius Loci I really liked as oh, well. Yeah. Oh, really good art for that. Um, yeah, all all the all the art. I mean, we've, yeah. we've said this at the top of the episode, but there's been so many things, like full page ones. Um, there's the Thane Norn, who has a whole picture and all i'll say about the fey norn very mm. quickly is it just says death in the fey world is a fluid matter so make of that what you will um yes. but yeah i all there's in enough creatures here to be like short encounters uh big boss battles and 100%. stuff and obviously we've not even touched like there's over 50 little encounter uh, little adventure hooks and there's uh, yeah. six sort of big encounters and then two adventures and a domain mm. of delight as well, Dualis, uh, which oh, has a yeah. Fey Lord called uh, the Lord of Reflections. And it all ties back to this idea, like you were saying about this idea of reflections, mm. inner truth, mystery, perceiving things, false mm. appearances. It's just. I love Dualis. I love the, the one. Can I say the hook that it has? That the minute Do you it. enter, a duplicate of you is made. What? So I missed know. that. Yeah, it's in, yeah, so the minute you enter Dualis, it, a, a duplicate of you is made, unaware to you until you obviously find out the story. And if you see the, the Lord of Reflections uh, states as their decree that the, your reflection is evil, and that is the mandatory thing. A lot of people in the city have a belief that that's not true, and there's a sort of rebellion against this idea. So there's a whole... And it, I was just like... And if you see your reflection mm -hmm. character, you must attack it, or the guards will attack it, attack you. Because otherwise... Because they will see that if you're, you're going against the rules... And if you're seeing as the, then you must be the evil one because you're going against the rules. Do you see what I mean? Oh my word! So there's sort of oh. uh, such a lot of like, I was like, uh, uh, that was in like the first four, and I was like, okay, I love it, fantastic, wow. really hundred bar, but five stars on Duala. <laughs> five yeah, stars. And, wow. and a really great little map, and oh, there's lots of little areas. The, it's the not map, just one city, it's got loads to it. Yeah, the the map is very cool. Again, very much like uh, Wild yeah. Beyond the Witch, like in the way it's set out. But so can I ask then? So with that mirror image then yeah. of yourself. Is it? Can you deliberately tell it's a mirror? Like, is it something that decrees it as? You look exactly the same as you, but they are mirrored. So if you had a like a so. mole on this side of my face, it would have a mole on that side of its face, for example. So you do that, and one element about them is different, but you Ooh. don't quite know what it is. So there's it's. Cool. Um, I will try and uh, find the actual wording here. Yeah, but, I guess because I I know yeah. I know like it's a big thing in D and D to always play, go against versions of yourself, whether it's evil yeah. versions or mirrored versions or doppelgangers and stuff like that. So I love that idea, and there's a law behind it that you have to kill them on site and then people disagree with it. That instantly mm. is a world of stories yeah, in there. That, and that idea of politics as well, like, oh, this yeah. is the done thing, but we don't like it. And ooh, yeah. great. It, it says here, yeah, so it was actually, there's typically there is something else different about it. It could be a different interest, talent, or personality trait. Rarely mm. they've asked, so it's more like a twin, as they're saying. So it's like someone that, so they just, okay. something about them that's just subtly, subtly different. Oh, and it, I, so I loved cool. it. Loved it. That's really cool. That's really cool. Well, Hamilton, we've definitely run over time, but thank you so much yeah. for agreeing <laughs> to read 150 pages. Well, it, of... it was a delight. I really, I want to say, I know I felt we started off with a sort of, a, a sort of negative, but it was, it was not really, I just felt it really is a great body of work. So mm. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think I think, and I wouldn't say negative. I just I think it's mm. seeing things that are from a different perspective. Yeah. Like some people would be like, absolutely, we want to have the the orphan. Um, yeah. I'm I'm alone, Batman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No parents, etc. Yeah. yeah, that that and that's totally fine. But I think maybe yeah. you and I are of, of that sort of um, that sort of ilk now, where we're just like. We just want people to have fun. Yeah. Let's not let's not have sad stuff. So let's just have happy, happy, <laughs> and happy, happy, ooh, time. it's a bit yeah. dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I I think there's definitely some bits of it where I'm like, mm, not sure, but stuff like, like the the flowers, the the certainly the fairy wild whales, butterflies. I think they were. Oh, they? the glass whales stuff. Yeah, yeah we didn't even touch those. Okay, exactly. uh, so sh shambling bouquet was the other one I thought was. I, yes. I, it's, 
in my head i was thinking yeah. like because there was a, again uh, we need to finish the episode but there's an adventure hook where uh, an aladrin hosts almost like the chelsea the royal chelsea flower show oh, uh right. And they're and they're all got shambling mounds, and everyone's trying to trick each other into oh, yeah. destroying it and stuff. And you're just like, uh, shambling bouquet. Sorry, shambling yeah. mounds is obviously the actual creature. Yeah. Um, so I was yeah, thinking so of a wedding. <gasps> throwing the throwing the shambling throwing the shambling bouquet, <laughs> and you've got. But instead of it being that, they throw it out into the ground. You've got to fight it, and whoever kills the shambling bouquet, <sighs> it, that's the is next to be married or something like that. Wow, oh, that that that's such a twist. I love that because yeah. then you can have almost like almost like as a one shot a Bryzillas yeah. and stuff like that. Exactly. That's, look, look at that. We've it's going to work in our Strixhaven, Oath of Beauty, Girls. It's going to. Um, it's all look happening. Look at that. We, we, look at the content we're driving out. Like, <laughs> yeah, if someone was watching this, it's probably made it up for DM's Guild now. We we've, yeah. we've lost out. Exactly. That, we're too late. It's already done. Someone's it's already done. Out. Well, Hamilton, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, another trip into the Feywild. Tell us. What are you up to? What is the stuff to signal boost? <laughs> so What's up with when you? this will be out, it will be the Thursday before our fin- grand finale of our season two one shots. Mm-hmm. Where so everyone's done their their individual one shots. So we've had our we've had our mausoleum Chronepsis, sort of dark Soulsy one. We've had our pirates, our Shella pirates, giving the essence of Olay. Yes. Talking about Olay earlier, and then we've had our gift bits in their battle of bands who have got who ended up stumbling through into the cult of dragons headquarters and got their their tesla coil now they've got all the items together they've all been teleported in their portals through to the dragon <laughs> bolt and it's now time to see if we can stop these dragons terrorizing Faerun. that's basically it simple <sighs> simple stuff but yeah that's our so- grand finale and that will be on saturday so that's that's what we're doing and then that's so cool and, and can people re-watch uh, those one shots and stuff that you you've done can. yes we have a youtube channel so if you just go to youtube and search dragon's duel and scroll past a few of the uh Yu- Oh ones if you try <laughs> dragon's duel and dnd game show that's probably the best way to do it on uh, and if you go to our link tree as well it's there but yes and our website will be up <gasps> So if you yes. go to Dragon's Jewel, all one word, .co.uk, you'll find all our videos there as well. Yes. Uh, very exciting What stuff. about yourself, yeah. Fiona? What have you been up to? What are you, what, what can little we find old me. Little old me. So obviously my name is Fiona. I run the What Am I Rolling podcast, which is a twice monthly RPG one shot podcast. As always, it is going very, very well. Um, there is stuff I can't talk about, and you know I can't talk about it, and it's it's very exciting, it's very but exciting. also terrified. <laughs> um, so there's that that's going on uh, behind the scenes, but uh, we're doing uh, other stuff that's coming out. Warhammer's currently going out uh, again. I'm you, you've got a schedule. I, I can't remember what happened in my podcast, um, but there'll be stuff like uh, Verts coming out at some point. Um, mm. I'm a recording. This is obviously in the past for most people, but in uh, in in my future, I'm recording a one shot of the the Doctor Who second edition RPG on Sunday with some people for oh, cool. who were on the, the uh, they used to be on something called the the Ood podcast or the Oodcast it's called, okay. which apparently was the number one Doctor Who fan cast in the oh, UK. Right, I didn't That's didn't know. So so yes, so we'll be running some Doctor Who for them. So that'd be very exciting. Um, mm. And I'm sure I'll be doing improv at some point. So if you're ever in London in person, uh, come to Hoopla, which is at, uh, well, the Miller pub, which is also Hoopla. Uh, and you probably see me doing some stuff on stage and going, oh, she's much better on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so much better edited. Uh, so exactly. <laughs> where's the Miller? Whereabouts is that? So the Miller is actually at London Bridge. London um, Bridge. I think I've been there. You might have been there. It's it's yeah. it's next to St Guy's and Thomas's, which I, for your yes, American listeners I have, have no there. idea where it is. I have yes. been there because I used to work on Southwark Street. So no way. Oh, yeah. See, look look at this incredibly small world. Hey, <laughs> all other podcasts are like oh L A. When I'm on the 404, 101, here we go. We can talk about. We can talk about London, London Bridge. <laughs> London Bridge. Excellent. The Shard. Um, People know the Shard. It's there. It's, it's right the shard next is. to the Shard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. don't. But the Shard doesn't do improv. Could you imagine? <laughs> Just like. Would make um, it more tense, I guess, if you're up. Oh right god, could you imagine just don't look down? Yeah, um exactly. but just to finally finish off, obviously we do have an offer code for uh Third Space Gaming, which is your friendly local game store in Burnley, so where I'm originally mm. from. Uh if you type in the code, I'll do the the action for it, but although our listeners won't be able to see it, but DMBC, uh like a cat doing a typewriter, uh <laughs> into uh the Third Space Gaming's uh website, uh you get ten percent off uh, your first order. So whether that is 
um, an RPG book or terrain, or even, I'm sure, if you ask nicely, and you can, if I pull it out, I know Ham can see this, but a beautiful oh. Witch Light al alternate cover. And as a result now, I, because I used to hold out on not getting alternate covers for stuff, because I was like, no, it needs to look nice. And now I'm like, I'm an idiot. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever owned. Mm. <laughs> it's amazing. So, it looks oh. so lovely. It's gorgeous. Need to buy it. I'm going to. I need to go find and buy it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And, and so those alternate covers are only available in uh, gaming stores. So go support your gaming stores. Don't go to Evil Amazon like I tried to. And then I was like, no, actually, uh, I, mm. I didn't get delivered. So I was like, too well, too bad. I'm going to Orcs Nest near me. Uh, mm. But yes. So do support them. And mm. yes, I guess next week we'll be back with a brand new topic. I'm sure we'll think of something then, and maybe we'll make it a bit snazzier uh, going out <laughs> rather than well, going. Well, like I did last week. Because yes. I knew we were doing this, I so mm -hmm. I will show a screen after this that will say <gasps> "See you next week," with, and it will tell you what it is. So, like last week, you would have seen yours. it for this one. You will see next week what next week's one is. So, in five seconds' God. time, you will know <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Great, I won't know, but future me will know. Future we me don't know. You will know. Exactly. All right. Well, until next time, friends. Thank you so much for joining us, and we thank will you. speak to you. See you next time. Okay. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>